Afghanistan, a war so old it had to google what yeet meant before saying it in a TikTok. Now they always say leaving is the hardest part, and it looks like Trump is about to tell Asraf Ghani, it's not you, it's me. So what's going on with this most recent troop withdrawal announcement? Well, to understand that, get comfy because it's story time. Before America invaded in 2001, Afghanistan was in a civil war and the Taliban had the Northern Alliance on the ropes. Now, Because internal conflicts in the Middle East are like the bat symbol for America, we invaded with the goal of getting Osama bin Laden, and maybe if we had a little time to kill, defeat the Taliban while we're there. Wouldn't one have to make two separate trips? Just like that, Afghanistan became a military turducken with America stuck right up in the middle of it all. This leaves us today in a bit of a weird Mexican standoff where we have the Taliban, Afghanistan, and America all trying to play the game to get their most preferred outcome. First you have the Taliban who just want America the heck out of Afghanistan. Rude. They were doing so well before we came and crashed the party. Why don't we just leave and let them clean the place up? The way the wind's blowing, it looks like history might be about to repeat itself. Then of course you have the government of Afghanistan who are saying, oh my gosh, please stay. You saw that map, right? We like having free speech, women's rights, democracy, and just generally not living in an emirate governed by strict interpretation of Islamic law. And of course, lastly, you have us, who, well, at this point, we're negotiating with one foot out the door. It's been 19 years, and we've spent a trillion dollars, or just over $26,000 per person in Afghanistan to prop up a government that still seems incapable of defending itself today. With this, let's get to the Trump administration's innovative Afghanistan strategy. He previously did the unthinkable and negotiated directly with the Taliban. On February 14th, the United States signed a truce with the Taliban. And you could tell that there were still some areas that needed working out because it was called the agreement for bringing peace to Afghanistan between the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan which is not recognized by the United States as a state and is known as the Taliban and the United States of America. It's a start, baby steps. The basic strategy here was to reward the Taliban for good behavior by removing US troops as a result of it. If you do the dishes and take out the trash without me having to remind you, I'll remove 250 troops in a year. More specifically, if you don't support terrorist groups that are threats to America and our allies, yourselves excluded of course, and show up to a negotiation with the Afghan government we recognize and are fighting on behalf of, we will get the heck out of Dodge on a staggered basis, culminating in a full troop withdrawal in April. After that truce, it was mission partially accomplished. An office of the Special Investigator General for Afghanistan Reconstruction released a report declaring, between March 1st and 31st, the Taliban refrained from attacks against coalition forces. Woohoo, that's us! However, they increased attacks against the Afghan army to levels above seasonal norms. So the civil war was definitely still on high, but no one was shooting at the uninvited guests anymore. So progress? An acceptable level of violence was maintained until the next big event, inter-Afghan peace talks, which fell on the unfortunate date of September 12th. As a New Yorker, I'd recommend you don't start your Taliban peace talks on 9-12. Someone forgot. Anyways, this was a historic achievement where the recognized government of Afghanistan sat down with the Taliban to try to duct tape together a government that both sides looked at and said, eh, this is bad, but not bad enough that I want to burn it all down. It was a real 2020 election of less than mediocre options. We're talking down to the essentials of the constitution. Are we going to be a democracy or a theocracy? What rights are we going to guarantee? As you can imagine, there was not exactly fertile ground for compromise. 
According to their spokesperson, the Taliban opposes elections. It seeks a country governed by a strict interpretation of Islamic law. All right, I hear you. How about only local elections and a government based on strict interpretation of Buddhist law? Or rampant voter fraud and a person who's not religious but is spiritual writing the laws? Unfortunately, the sheer fact that these negotiations had to happen showed how much of a failure years of American foreign policy had been in Afghanistan. If we leave, you're going to fall to the Taliban. Comparisons to Vietnam are everywhere. We got them in the room, now figure it out. Afghan government officials said that the Taliban think they have defeated America and see the talks in Doha as the negotiation of the government's surrender. The only real leverage the Afghan government had was, as long as there isn't peace, the strongest military in the world is going to keep fighting on our behalf. So with that timeline in mind, we come to last week. Peace negotiations in Qatar between the Afghan government and the insurgency are stalled. Taliban offensives are surging near important cities in the south and north, and morale has been plunging amongst the Afghan government forces as they take heavy casualties. So what do you do in this less than optimal situation? Well, enter as of a few days ago, former head of the Department of Defense Mark Esper. He argues that back in February, the United States made a truce with the Taliban, and we should stick to it. The U.S. Taliban deal promises full U.S. withdrawal by the end of April if its conditions, including Taliban negotiations with the Afghan government and a reduction of violence, have been met. He argued that breaking that deal with an early withdrawal would be like negotiating against yourself. I'll have that report to you in a week. Uh, you're not saying anything. Okay, two days. Fine, I'll stay in the office overnight and finish it. Just please let me leave this conversation. Conditions on the ground were not yet right, Mr. Retzper is said to have written, citing continuing violence, the dangers a rapid pullout could pose for the remaining troops, the effect on alliances, and fear of undermining peace negotiations between the Taliban and the Afghan government. Days after this, on November 9th, he was fired, and before his seat was even cool, it was announced that the United States was rolling out. So that's how we got here. Now it's time to ask the equally important question, where are we? On January 15th, America will reduce its troop levels in Afghanistan from 4,500 soldiers to 2,500 soldiers. Now that might sound like a weird way of ending a war. I'm going all in. Well, you only put half your chips in the bot. I mean, 2,500 troops, that's a lot more than a drop in the bucket. I know we were negotiating this thing with one foot out the door, but we have to keep one foot in the door as well. To understand this partial withdrawal, you have to ask the question, why are we in Afghanistan in the first place? US forces are in Afghanistan for two purposes. The first is to train, advise, and assist Afghan security forces to fend off the Taliban. The second is to counter terrorist threats emanating from the country, from groups like ISIS and Al Qaeda. With this new move, America is trying to remove ourselves from the Afghan Civil War picture and just hang out in the frame. The cuts will leave behind a force that military planners see as a critical counterterrorism force to serve as a hedge against Al Qaeda and Islamic State loyalists, and to try to keep neighboring countries from meddling more forcefully in Afghanistan. Yeah, Iran and Russia, back off! Afghanistan, they're hard dumpster fire. Now I know some of you might be thinking that we're having our forces in Afghanistan five days before Joe Biden presumably is to be inaugurated president. Surely he's not going to abandon the Afghan government, but not really. Mr. Biden seemingly agrees with President Trump's desire to get out of Afghanistan. In 2009, Mr. Biden sought a different approach, to keep focus on international terrorist threats in Afghanistan and little else. 
yeah, Trump kind of jumped on this political grenade for him. So that's exactly what's going on with the Afghan troop withdrawal. We're probably going to have to put a big ol asterisk on that whole don't negotiate with terrorists thing from now on. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.